Hey, welcome everyone. I'll be doing my best in this video to explain in a high level way how my pathfinding algorithm works. Um, so this is a pathfinding algorithm that works in real space or free space. Um, so it does its best to always find the shortest path between two points. So uh, I'm, let's just show you guys um, a little bit how this looks like when you go through this sort of terrain. And uh, if I go further up, so this is a really fast, like it finds the shortest path really fast. Okay, so here's a bit more, um, so I'm gonna try to explain a bit how this works. So the, um, instead of pathfinding directly on the grid itself, I'm doing a bit more of an, uh, I'm optimizing the space in order to make it easier to do some pathfinding. So the first step in the optimization is to divide um, everything in vertical and horizontal lines. So um, this is how it looks. For example, um, this whole area is vertically, um, rather horizontally similar. This whole area here is horizontally similar. Areas that are horizontally the same get merged. So right here, you, be, you have like a one by two. Here, this is horizontally the same. So it becomes four by four. So the whole space is divided correctly into horizontal areas. Likewise, you want to do the same thing for vertical, like divide the, the whole space vertically. So this is how it looks when you divide everything vertically. So already like by dividing space this way and only doing pathfinding inside of those horizontal and vertical areas, it is impossible to end up outside of the um, the terrain, just by definition, because it's impossible. Like if it, if you only do pathfinding on this, there's no way to go further left here, and there's no way to go further right. Um, and vertically, there's no way to end up higher here or lower here, because um, this way of representing the terrain limits you. Uh, to the inside of the the terrain. Anyway, um, so with those two like horizontal and vertical areas, you can find the intersection between each one, and then with the intersection you can create nodes. Um, yeah, so this whole terrain ends up be becoming like this sort of node system, um, where the nodes are rather optimized. Like here, instead of having four tiles, you end up with, and then essentially like four nodes, you end up with only a single one. Here, you end up with a uh, only two, uh, a single node for two tiles. Here, three tiles. Different area, like right, this whole area right here is pretty, like it's three wide instead of being like however many this is, 12. So instead of having 12 nodes to look through, you only have four nodes in this whole area. Um, here I'm gonna show a, a simpler one. Like let's say you have um, this whole area where it's a, a lot of squares. You end up with only a single node instead of having 25 nodes, only one. So it's very optimized. And then if you wanna start adding complications, poop, this whole thing is three nodes. So already you're s like the space is optimized so you don't need to search as many nodes as if you were to search directly on the, the tiles. Um, okay, so there's another part that is interesting. By dividing the space horizontally and vertically, um, you end up being able to know more information about the area in which you're, you are in. So here, 
even though you're standing here, you have information about the whole vertical, the whole uh, horizontality of this area. When you're here, you have information about the whole horizontality right here the whole and so and then likewise the uh, verticality so for every area that you're in you have the verticality so it's not just like l this single tile that is here and you only know about this tile now you start to know information about the area that you're in um, so when you end up with your nodes the nodes are not only like this size but each node has information about the horizontality of its general area and the verticality of it. And this is really useful. I'll try to explain this um, as well as I can. Um, so let's show a bit more like this sort of idea of like horizontality and verticality. So this area right here is, um, so I call this a sort of uh, node boundary. So for so each node has a sort of node boundary. Okay. So and then um, yeah, so you can see here this area here. Um, from this node by, uh, boundary, you know how wide it is and how high it is. And here too, you know how wide it is or how high it is. And everywhere in this terrain, you know like the 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 node boundaries. Okay, so how is how are the nodes boundary useful um, for finding um, a path in real space? Well, it's very it's like literally like so simple. Let's say you're here and you want to travel here. There's something that happens when you exit a node boundary. You can see like um, when you, you when you end up here. You're no longer in the original boundary. Well, let's say you go from here to here. You might end up in like a couple different node boundaries, but you're never outside of the first one. So uh, this property by itself allows you to find, uh, let's say you never exit this starting boundary. It means that you can go from one point to another in a straight line. So that alone allows you to do like straight lines easily. Like it's easy to know that you can be, you can, this point here can see this point up here because you're still in your original boundary. Okay, I'm trying to nail this point. Um, while if you start here and you go here, now something happens. We don't know what exactly happens, but there's a, a sort of tear in features and then, um, um, on a high level way, we can sort of see that you can say, take this sort of intersection between this boundary and this one, and you can end up with this um, this sort of corner that is right here. Let's say I show this. You can sort of see like visually, we can see that there's something here, there's a corner, whatever that is, um, but like we're able to go around it. Um, now, when you want to do, like, uh, okay, finding this corner is really interesting because you can now do um, sort of line of sight thing where this corner, you can, okay, I'll, I'm going to show this other visualization. Um, let's say you start here and then you end up in this node and then you find this corner. You can extend this corner like to infinity. And if from this point you end up somewhere below this line, it means that you're, you have to turn at this corner. If you go from here to anywhere above the line, then you're, um, it means you can go from here to here in a straight line. So I'll try to show this. So you can go from here to here in a straight line, no problem. Because you're at all points when you're in this node, you're above the line. And then likewise, if you want to go here to here, and then you find like all these different Terran features. And then I, I guess like those are corners, but like they're more like Terran features. As long as you're above the lines, these sort of lines of sights, then you can go in a straight line. If you end up here, 
now you have to turn at the corner because um, from here to down here you have your you end up below the line and then this whole geometry like you can sort of see how it evolves as you like depending on the, the starting point and like this is only a visualization like in the algorithm itself like there's no such thing as a line like uh, that you extend like this but like and this is really cheap to compute because it's only um, if I yeah. because it's only a, a sort of intersection between two rectangles in the end. Oh, I forgot that I, I had that. Yeah, so um. So that's I I think I went through like the general idea of how like this works. Um, so at any point, if you start doing like this sort of pathfinding, and you end up outside of um, not just your original boundary, but like any boundary that you go through, um, if you end up like you you end up in a node that is outside a previous boundary, then you know that something is happening, and then you do this sort of. Um, intersection like right the intersection between like this and this like you're, you're able to find this corner really easily okay so um hopefully like this gives you a, a sort of big overview so let's show what happens with like uh, different specific cases so like this case that i showed earlier this has only a single node this whole thing is only one node so you're able to, from anywhere inside of that, that node, you never exit this node boundary. So you can always go in a straight line. And like this is, um, you pretty much find this path in one step. Let's say you have this sort of S and you start up here. I guess I'll show the, the, the line. So like from here to up there, this is very like this is a very short path. It's as far as I know the shortest possible path with this sort of terrain. So this uh, S shape is pretty fun. Um, now this is one case that is usually kind of hard for um, uh, normal pathfinding algorithms. Um, where you start at the bottom of this sort of staircase and you find this sort of straight line where you don't need to start like doing this things that you usually see in a lot of games where you start to um, do a sort of uh, staircase but with this you're able to find this in one step or, well not one step that's a lie but uh, you find like a str one line and then if you start like um, here you only have to turn uh, twice, once and twice. Or if you go from here all the way down here, you can see how like the paths are really short. This one is uh, pretty much the same case, but this staircase is a bit larger. So I'll just turn that back off. So it's really fun to just like, see these sort of really short paths. Uh, this one is one where you can start from the center and you can see like different uh, areas. So it finds some really short paths. You don't need to turn that many times. You just go, when you can do it, go in a straight line. That's pretty much what the algorithm does. Oops, I keep uh, pressing the wrong button. So this is just a visualization to show how um, you can 
sort of spread, like how you can explore this terrain. So this means that at two seconds I can be down here. This is not actually lagging, it's because uh, my arm is a bit tired right now. So yeah, it's really fun. Anyway, thanks for watching everyone and uh, peace.